all of a sudden we just snap and they're making out under the bleachers. Okay. When bully boys start peeking through the bleachers and they're like, oh, look at them, the turd and the idiot, <laughs> you know, whatever. The turd and the nerd. The turd and the nerd. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hello, welcome to Guides the Unknown. I'm Kristen. And I'm her little brother, William. And happy Valentine's Day. If you are listening to this as it comes out in real time, then we just celebrated Valentine's Day or just passed it. Now everybody celebrates it. A lot of sure. people don't care for it. Absolutely. What are your feelings about Valentine's Day? I feel a significant amount of uh, uh, strain, pressure. Uh -huh. But I also understand uh, people who wouldn't enjoy it at all. But then inevitably yeah. on the day itself, I really enjoy it. I did... Uh, fun things uh, here in the house. Oh, nice. I got a Valentine's Day card for Zoe from Molly the dog. That's so sweet. I got to draw a little paw print on it. She yep. didn't care. Of course. Didn't care at all. Well, she doesn't know. I, I got Zoe a Valentine from Dada mm -hmm. and a little present. And I got a card for Allie, of course. Yeah. But I set up a little, because I go to ba bed later than everybody. I set up a very miniature... Um, a little surprise tableau on the dining room table so that in the Ooh. morning at breakfast, they came down and there were just little gifts for everybody. Oh, that's nice. Which was very fun. Very, very fun. I like the sneaking. Yeah. It's adjacent to sneaking and scheming for selfish purposes, uh, doing right. something nice for somebody else without them knowing about it. It's ideal. And also it's sneaking and scheming without the um, the weirdness of Christmas yeah. and the attached you know feelings about what you're doing. What do you mean? The, the whole I, Santa I feel thing. a sort of attachment for no my the, the Santa of it all. Oh, there's right. not the weight of Santa. It's very clear that this is you. Yeah, true, 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 true. Yeah, I'm sick of Santa getting all of the right accolades. Yeah, all the attention makes me sick. Me too. Why? How do you feel about it? I love Valentine's. Oh, you Day. do? I always have. Single, heartbroken, married, whatever you got. I like it. I love love. <laughs> I like the the imagery of it. The aesthetics appeal to me. Okay. I just enjoy I enjoy it. Yeah. I just think it's a nice day. Okay, very good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Like people try to be a little nice to each other. It's I'm into it. So this episode I went to the dentist. I got fillings on Valentine's Day. They gave me a long stemmed rose. Really? Yes. That's nice. It was really nice. I teared up. Unnecessary. Of course you did. I know. And what, I, what I don't you cry at. I don't know. That's the bigger and I, quiz. I even like, you know how, you know how like you'll feel a little like tears prickling at the back of your eyes. I would normally say, I don't know what I said is not how I normally describe that. And I was like, ugh. I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm so touched by this. I feel like a tear tickle. <laughs> and I was like, Ugh. A tear tickle. I don't like that. I don't like it either. They asked you to leave. Yeah. I, I was just overwhelmed. Yeah. So this episode is technically coming out after Valentine's yep. Day where people, you know, people would typically rush their content mm -hmm. to be released on the day. But we're sort of talking talking about the experience, the aftermath. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, now the we had carnage. A, the carnage. We had a whole plan. Yeah. And I got screwed. Oh, please. You didn't get screwed. I did. Oh, just because you pulled up your little tabs. Two tabs, Kristen. What two tabs. Yeah. Last week, as we often do, we record this show live on YouTube.com slash at GTTUpod. When we're done recording the show, we usually just chill for really a couple of minutes with the, the, the people in the chat. Mm -hmm. And we say what we're going to do next time. Right. So we had already decided... We're going to cover Valentine's Day horror movies. So I'm covering the 2001 uh, pseudo slasher mm -hmm. Valentine. Right. Um, and Kristen uh, picked that she was going to do My Bloody Valentine. Mm -hmm. Now there are two My Bloody Valentine movies. There was a, an, an original one in like the 70s or 80s. And then a, a later sequel in the, the aughts, 2009-ish. Right. Uh, not knowing what she was going to pick, I prepped for both. Only for Kristen to come down and say, throw it all away. By the way, prepped for both means that we have this screen behind us for the benefit of people who watch the show. And it's fun to put something relevant to the show on the screen. So by prep for both, Will means that he pulled up a tab with a poster of the original My Bloody Valentine and the remake. Do you really want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to find a decently sized image that will display well. So I really had to hunt and pack. Of course. You make me sick. You now, make me sick. Talk about effort, William. Yeah. Talk about effort. It's going to blow you out of the water. You know what I did? What'd you do? Here's what I did for the show. <laughs> there is a VR Valentine's movie <gasps> special. 
I guess you could say. Eli Roth's Be yes. Mine. Yes. I decided to watch Eli Roth's Be Mine in VR because we have a long forgotten Oculus at home. Oh. So I found that charger. I stressed about the little hand things until Ryan told me that they were battery operated because I couldn't figure out how you charge those. And I fired up Eli Roth's Be Mine and experienced it. And not only did I do that, William, but I recorded my oh, experience. Are you serious? Yes. Please roll that beautiful bean footage. Oh, that's what this is. Yes. All right, everybody. We got All right, that. This is only two minutes long, so don't worry. That's fine. It's a special clip from Chrissy. I have yep. not watched it. I, I avoided it. Here, let's throw it at Chrissy. Mm hmm. Hello everybody, it's Big Chrissy, Big Stinky, and I'm going to do the VR movie from Eli Roth called Be Mine. Uh, I have an Oculus, I'm going to put it on, it's got my glasses in it right now, and I don't even know if this is going to be worth filming, if it's anything, but I figured I'd give it a shot, and um, what was I going to say, I feel like I had something that, oh, I have to stand up while I'm doing it because I somehow didn't calibrate something right, so I can only see the screen totally if I'm standing up. It's, it's been quite a process. So I'm gonna stick these bad boys on now and proceed. I will see you around. Okay. <laughs> All right, I see a scary lady who is also wearing an Oculus. Okay, tightening up my gear for battle. Okay. All right, I'm gonna full screen it. Ooh, this is weird. Okay. And now I'm pressing play. It's a 31 minute thing. So just to confirm, you now we're just going to watch you for 31 minutes <laughs> looking around <laughs> in, into cyberspace? Is only the cold open. And you, you'll be able to hear it a little bit. Oh, we'll be able to hear the actual yes. audio of the experience. A little bit. There's only a minute of this left. Okay. Yeah. Also, I want everybody to note that um, my lip is stuck up a little bit in the Oculus. I didn't notice that before. My My skin under my nose is pulled up. Oh, so my lip is pulled so up. So if you look weird, that's why? Yeah, it's funny. It sounds like an excuse, but okay. <laughs> it says the following program includes graphing content and dangerous, imitable behavior that... Well, all right, too fast. See it? I think I do have to stand up. Is this better? <laughs> Not really. Standing up, you can't even see your face. All right, you're back. <laughs> Big heart on screen. I have the same jean jacket as this love interest. Oh! Oh, an arrow through the throat. Another one through the chest. And splattered all over his lady love. Somebody, oh my God. Somebody dressed in all white with wings and a little Cupid mask. And then just shot an arrow from, through the eye, I guess. And it says, be mine. Can I look around? Not really. Huh. She's looking right at me. Huh. Like I said, I don't know if this video is good for anything. Okay, that's oh, it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so, so I'm, I'm interested in the fact that you couldn't really look around because that VR to me would be that you're in a whole other environment and you can sort of crane your head around to look at stuff. No? Absolutely. So the only reason that I even set up a camera to to record myself during this was because I assumed that I might be doing stuff like right. I didn't know if it I thought maybe there was some sort of interactive element potentially yeah um or at the very least I might be like looking around at things being like whoa I see this I see that I would say first of all to to do our classic like do I recommend do I not recommend the softest of recommends it, oh, it's okay it's fine. Yeah. It's not great. It's um, without credits. It's under half an hour long. Yeah. And I would specifically recommend not using your Oculus and just watching it because you can just straight up watch it on Facebook. And there's like no difference. I don't even really understand why they called it a VR sort of thing, because as far as I can tell, it just felt like I was sitting up super close to the TV, basically. Right. And the characters are looking into the camera. So looking at you while they're talking. And besides that, there's no VR. Like you're in, you know, like a sorority house party. And it's not like you can look around and see all the people partying around you. And catch it's little just, details if you look no. in the right place at the right time or something. No, it's just very close up to you. And yeah. the characters look into your eyes. That's okay. the entirety of the VR. 
So I had the camera running for like 14 minutes until I was like, there's no reason for me to be recording this. But I thought it might add a little bit of texture to the show. So totally. I still sent it in. But there's nothing, immer- it's interesting that you can watch it on Facebook, you know, without yeah. the VR headset, because that is how I did it. You did? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Do you see what happens? Do well, you were see? you going to talk about it? Yeah. Oh. You big shrimp. But there's a very dumb reason why. It's fine. Well, is it because of the tweets? Mm, you, well, so anyway, so I had seen that this existed just uh, yeah, yeah. in my travels or whatever online. And I kind of forgot about it. I meant to tell you about it for the show. And then I saw that you replied to a tweet about it. Yes. Yep. So um, Joe Russo, who is a writer um, and whose Twitter handle is at Joe Russo tweets tweeted i'm saying tweet a lot tonight crypt tv launches a remake of our short be mine but you wouldn't know from the marketing due to our non-union contract it's cooler idea jumped to vr under one of my favorite horror creators eli roth just wish we had been part of it or at least acknowledged and you said infuriating that this shit happens also i'll definitely check this out for this week's gttu pod now i did see that so wait a minute are you surprised that i watched it I, yes i still am why because <laughs> i thought you would have forgotten or something because uh, it would be it just sounds like happy horse shit or something yeah yeah no i watched it Oh, okay. you know, I watched it. Uh, here is here is why I watched it, not mm-hmm. to to complicate things too much. Sure. The I just pulled up the poster for "Be Mine," Eli Roth's "Be Mine." Yep. And the killer is wearing a sort of cherubic, very. cupid mask. <laughs> yeah. Which looks very, very, very much like the 2001 slasher movie Valentine yes. killer mask. So I was curious sort of on that level because I was wondering if it was sort of biting from right. the movie that I was covering and we had discussed me covering. Right. Yes, correct. Um, you know, I think that it is in mask sense. In mask, uh, really in no other sense. Yes. Right. Yeah. But also, I mean, is it even really a bite? Like that's what a cherub looks like. <sighs> you know what I mean, so if you want to do a cherub mask, however, it is undeniable. Well, that's what that, I'm saying. Like, there's another slasher there's movie another, somebody already did where it. the killer looks like that, right. except that the killer in Be Mine's outfit departs drastically. There, oh, yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Wearing all tight white yeah. with like giant angel wings. Yes. So drastic change. Yeah. But to your point, you couldn't just make another slasher where somebody's wearing a hockey mask and be like, well, it's just a hockey mask. Yes, definitely. Hockey masks are a thing, but everybody knows Jason. Yeah, he's so, the hockey mask guy. And Valentine, the 2001 movie, is known enough loosely i think it's pretty yeah it's pretty loose. I, I guess it's i'm not against somebody you know redoing it but to to a certain a certain horror audience it feels yeah very rinse repeat yeah definitely yeah. at least just visually yeah. um so what joe russo was referring to was that uh he you know he said he he made a short and so i watched that and he also had a follow-up tweet about it and he said the original short was shot by a hard-working crew in a single day for only for only twenty five hundred dollars here's the studio edit and so the deal here is it's only a couple of minutes long really yeah and it's a couple coming in from you know presumably a valentine's day date and there is indeed a masked killer inside the house that they go back to either her house or his house um they're not wearing a cherub mask like this there did you watch it too i did okay so there i thought the mask was like really creepy and cool yep. like it's kind of uh michael myers-esque in a way because the person is wearing <laughs> just a dark outfit otherwise kind of indistinct and then this mask that is like kind of dirty um but does have somewhat like cherub like features in that it's got little eye eyebrows and a little bit of messy rouge on the cheeks right and it's also not a full head mask it's just like the front of the face yes and so this killer has a bow and arrow or a crossbow or whatever and first kills the guy who came in with the lady so it seems like they were the target but then kills the lady and um the you know these two dating people kind of fall on each other and then they are inside like a giant heart of blood yes and that's basically it just very simple and just yeah which is which is great horror Mm -hmm. shorts on a micro budget are very much a thing uh they're very much a way they're 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 sort of like uh considered to be unofficially part of a pipeline that might get you into a conventional studio system yeah uh joe russo's uh tweets i think were really interesting where he's like 
Now Eli Roth's Be Mine, which I know for a fact is taking off from uh, the short that we made is out there and I've got nothing to do with it and that's a shame, but mm -hmm. the company is well within their contractual rights. Yeah. He's, he's right, right? Like, he does not own the short that he made, mm -hmm. right? You might if you made it completely independently. If you sold it, that's a whole different thing. Um, and so, to me, I always look at stuff like that, and partly because, in a very small way, I've, I've suffered the same thing, where mm -hmm. things that I've created are not considered legally to be my creation. Right. I, I get frustrated by that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that sucks. And it's not just that you don't own it, because like, all right, I got paid right. to make something. So how mad can I be? I got I got paid. It's the idea that they might continue using it without mm -hmm. you. That yeah. you are disposable um to the, the the to the idea outside of having created it to begin with. Yeah. So that is the stuff that I sort of bristle at, even though it's legal, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, certainly. Um what's weird to me as well is that uh, this Be Mine short of VR Valentine's slasher, mm -hmm. Eli Roth did not direct this. He wrote it. Right. And so because he is uh, more of a bankable name, no one's talking about the fact that director Adam McDonald, mm -hmm. uh, he, he's the listed director on the thing. Well, really, no one's talking about it at all. You don't think so? No. I, I, you got to wonder where, really. where it comes from. You what know? do you mean? It's like a stunt piece. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, yeah, I, I want, you know, obviously there are a lot of comments under it on uh, Facebook where it lives. They're super, super mixed. Uh, I would say it's almost like 60, 40, like 60% liked it. 40% yeah. were like, this completely sucks. If you look up Be Mine VR on Twitter, it's a lot of porn. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so it's not even people talking about the actual thing. Not really. Yeah, I, I will say I don't think I would have known about it if not for Joe Russo mm -hmm. tweeting it. Um, uh, but I was curious enough. Yeah. Uh, having watched it, admittedly, I, di I didn't like it. Yeah. I, I thought it was... We to, to what you were talking about, like even in, in the, the video that you made, like <clears throat> I watched it in a browser on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. um, and... Everything is so far away. It's so weird. It's so weird. I assumed that when you're in VR, the video must wrap around you more. No. I mean, So look, that you can get a little closer to what's happening. Because it's like... Oh, you're good and close. <clears throat> I mean, maybe I had some setting wrong. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what well, you but, were supposed to have done. I mean, I full screened it or whatever. Yeah. And it was just like, it just being very close to my eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. So. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. If you had that experience where it was like very like, like unimmersive, mm -hmm. um, that's probably what a lot of people are experiencing with it, right? Like if, it, if it's not user friendly enough to teach you how to get it to wrap around you, then. I didn't think so. You know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. It's too small. Yeah. So when I watched it, like there are characters, there's like a woman on a balcony and she's like fighting people or something, but it's like you're watching it. Like you're, you're standing in the end zone and it's happening on the, in the center of the football field. Mm -hmm. So it's like way down there. And I can tell what's happening. I can tell that like this person is fighting that person. But when you think about like. Well, it wasn't like that in VR, I will okay. say. I mean, it was all pretty close up. Okay. It, seriously, it felt like I was just like watching a TV and my face was like right in the TV. Oh, interesting. Because it kind of was. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like the screen is like right by your eyes. So you could like make out people's expressions and like yes. the, the real performance? Yeah. All right. Because for me, it was like watching Definitely. a play from the balcony. No, it was very close up. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I think so if you similar. call that VR. I don't know. Yeah, I had this. I had this thing uh, a million years ago where I, truly, when I think I was like a teenager, uh, and I was like, "All right, well, so DVDs cool, right? Like, what's like the next thing, mm -hmm. right? Like, we can all have this at home. So what? What do you do next for like fun home entertainment?" <clears throat> and I, I, I sort of imagined, and it's not the most inventive thing, but like, imagine having a table where like a hologram can appear. Yeah. You know, almost like Chewbacca I'm about with to that say, chess I was set. about to say exactly that, like in the Star Wars Christmas special. Absolutely. Yeah. The Chewbacca chess set thing. We're just... Shen Yun. Yes. Jumping all around. What? Remember that thing I told you about? There's... And people... People knew. The people responded. <coughs> there are posters all over the place for this, like, dance experience oh, Shen okay. Yun or Shen Yun or whatever. That's kind of like um, Cirque du Soleil. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And they, the little people on Chewbacca's table that they were doing Shen Yun. So I, I 
pictured basically something like that, where you could be watching a scene between, like, the simplest possible example is, like, two people are talking. Mm -hmm. Now, where I'm sitting and looking at the table, I have one vantage point. Where you're sitting, you have a different vantage point. Mm -hmm. I might see that one of the characters has his, like, fingers crossed behind his back. So I know that this deal is going to go sour. Right, But you're sitting over there. You can't see that he's got his fingers behind his back. Yeah. And that is sort of like a child's rudimentary concept of what I think VR could do. Mm -hmm. Look in the right direction at the right time and you might pick up an element of story that somebody else doesn't get because they're not looking exactly in the right place. I like to watch the Clue VHS through VR and see what the hell's going on there. Woo hoo. We got to do that. That is something that we've talked about periodically. I know. I dare say the next Netherworld Dispatch, we just need to make it happen. Yeah. The Clue VHS game. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was kind of curious to see that this VR experience is is really sort of just like, sort of like it's it's like a regular movie just shot in a really crazy way. Yeah, I mean, well, you can pop on our Oculus next time you come over and take a look. See, that's okay. Yeah. Um. So so what did you so you would not recommend it? No. Okay. I would not. I thought I thought it was uh uh. Again, I, I know a lot of people dump on Eli Roth. Mm-hmm. I I don't even really have that much of an opinion necessarily i just thought it was a little cheesy yeah and stuff that i've i've seen before yeah totally it's meh um so here's what the plot of it is so spoilers if you uh are worried about that sort of thing are going to happen for this movie right now all right so the deal is that there is a girl named rebecca who has been stalked by somebody who's dressed like cupid in the way that we described earlier for years and that person has shot and killed multiple suitors with a bow and arrow cupid-esque on valentine's day leaving becca unharmed but traumatized she hopes to leave all this behind when she goes to college, but she receives a Valentine's Day card that says, be mine, to her sorority house, and she feels this is a threat from her stalker. Yeah. Um, so she's been keeping her past a secret to everybody except for her roommate, Hannah, but she decides to confide in her acquaintance, Dash... Um, I don't even remember. I have to admit, you're talking about all this, and I, yeah. I barely remember. He's the... he's. You know, wearing like a, a sports jacket. No, okay. a sports jacket's like a blazer. It's like a yeah, suit jacket. Yeah, you know, what a sports guy wears. Like I'm playing like a, baseball. A letterman jacket? Yeah, a letterman jacket. There you go. He's wearing a letterman jacket. He sees her in the library talking to the detective who's on her case. And he's like, oh, what's going on or whatever. And so she tells him the the story and, and what's happening. Um, and by the way, when she talked to the detective, it was to hand him over the card that said be mine because it's evidence and the detective was like don't worry we're still working on this or whatever <laughs> it seems like i'm not doing anything but i swear i'm working on <laughs> yeah, it basically <laughs> it sounds negligent i mean i also don't totally understand what he could be well no i guess i do i was gonna say i don't understand what he could be working on given what i'm about to tell you you gotta wonder how much of a, a, a detective's day is mm-hmm. literally making progress yeah. versus just like grasping at straws yeah and and telling people that you're still working on it i'm, I'm on it yeah yeah I don't know what it is, not but I'm just, on... Not to besmirch detectives. Certainly not. Yeah. Certainly not. Okay, so Dash, yeah. um, you know, gets the story out of her. And she says that, you know, they always kind of thought that it was this guy, Milo, who is a dude from her hometown that had a crush on her. And she, he was always asking her out and she was saying no. And then one day she caved and went out to lunch to, with him because she felt bad for him. And he tried to kiss her. But she, you know, rebuffed his advances. So he tried to kill himself by drinking bleach, which gave him brain damage. And so, you know, he was all pissed off and brain damaged or whatever. So next he got hydrofluoric acid online and planned an acid attack on Bega. But he, quote, or no, but, quote, he accidentally spilled it on his own face. Oops. How do you? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Because well, they want to make a monster. Well, I know, obviously, but he accent even just saying on his own face I is know. funny. It, he it, accidentally it's... spilled it on his own face. What a weird line to have to say instead of just being like he accidentally sp- splashed himself he with it. Spl- yeah, it splashed back in his face as he was doing something. He I spilled. Acc- I know. I accidentally spilled it on my own face. It's such a dumb there, it is. This is a shame. That, there are a bunch of <clears throat> shocky lines like that in this, where I was like, "What?" Yeah, there, there, there is a thing 
anytime somebody talks about something happening to their face, it sounds a little embarrassing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, Ow, my face! My face! He got my face. Yeah. It, it just sounds, I don't know why it sounds so silly, but it well, does. You know, I don't know. Like, it, it's easier to, to, to spill something on almost any other body part, to right. hurt any, almost any almost any other body part i also wonder if it's got something to do with like you'd be like you got i got acid in my eyes that yeah, sounds so, horrifying right yeah, it's like, so non-specific the face is just the generic conglomeration of a million important features yeah totally it got all over my face <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh no my face <laughs> my face so he accidentally it's like being spilled like, it ow my body right right yeah it's weird what do you mean what happened yeah um, so during this part, they are cutting to Milo, who she's talking about in his room. And he's like a rock and roll dude with a leather jacket on. And he's in a black room with posters everywhere. And when he gets the acid on his face, they play heavy badass guitar music while he rides on the floor. Like, it's just like really cheesy and, yeah. and weird. Um, so she says that cops. Ha- so the guy Dash, who he's talking to is like, well, why don't they go pick him up? Like if, if this is who's been doing this to you, because clearly, you know, you plan an acid attack on you. He obviously has it out for you. And yeah. now there are people attacking everybody you date. Like logic would dictate that it's Milo. And she says that the cops have gone to his house to arrest him, but he's in a wheelchair and he's barely mobile. So it can't be him. So they just kind of are, you know, trying to figure out whatever else. That's why I was saying like, what's the detective doing exactly? Yeah, right. But I guess just looking for anyone else. So Dash says that his friend Tyler is the captain of the archery team at the college and puts together this plan that they will go to this Valentine's party tonight that's going to be happening at her sorority bows in hand the archery team and they will surround becca and entrap this guy and beat the crap out of him and becca reluctantly finally says yes so the dudes and the sorority girls um all end up hearing about this plan i guess becca decides to tell them all about what she's been going through now the whole party's going to be in on it and they talk to the sorority house mother mrs hannigan who is alana Ubach, who is from sister act two back in the habit oh my she's God. the girl who doesn't know mary had a little lamb Kristen, you make me sick i don't know why i'm surprised you didn't notice I, I, that i actually thought that you would if you had seen this that you would know that i'm telling you i couldn't see who anyone was <laughs> right right it right. was like looking through the wrong side of binoculars <laughs> yeah i had the opposite experience you were using an I oculus like... i was using binoculus <laughs> yeah you were using a nopulus that's for sure oh my god okay nopulus. so uh so yeah they're they're t- trying to talk her into it and she's not into it obviously but they finally wear her down and she's like okay are they gonna have cops stationed outside the party makes no sense that she would say yes to this plan but of whatever. course not so people are partying they're dressed up all valentine's and sexy and this girl in the sorority gets up on the bar to make a toast and a speech about how they're gonna protect becca and they're gonna get this guy for good when blamo she is shot by an arrow through the head and it is mayhem now this valentine man just starts going through the party picking people off uh they run outside to get help from the cops who are stationed there they see the cops were killed obviously it's the whole bit i like valentine man as a name did i say that yeah the valentine Valentine man Man is here yeah like the what is it marathon man the lawnmower man bye bye man yeah the bye bye man the valentine man um, now, I remind you, this is a half hour thing, so it's going to move really fast. Risk. The reveals are going to come fast. So at one point, you know, they are stalking the killer. They, they're, you know, looking to find him because they had this plan with their bows and arrows. So they have the weapons and they make their way upstairs. Um, it doesn't go super smoothly on their end to get there because they hear somebody creaking on the floor above them and assume it's the killer for some reason. So they shoot f- through the floor and shoot through somebody's foot. Um, but still, they proceed up the stairs and they're they're looking for the bad guy. Now, the main archer, the head of the archery team, Tyler, goes ahead a little bit and is poking around while Dash and Becca are hanging back slightly. And he gives the all clear and he's leaning on the railing and is like, yeah, I guess he he ran away or something. When from out of the shadows, who should appear but Mrs. Hannigan with a meat cleaver and she slices all of his fingers off. The den mother. The den mother, who we thought was dead. I forgot to say that. They passed her body. Whatever. And they were like, oh, she died. Um, oh, she must so. have died. <laughs> oh, she died. <laughs> so it turns out that Milo... <laughs> 
the guy who spilled hydrofluoric acid on his face is her son. And Dash, the guy who was like, don't worry, Becca, we're going to protect you, is her other son, Milo's brother. They have all been in on this together to get revenge on Becca for Milo's predicament. Even Which though this was, was his all his fault. fault. It's yeah. completely his fault. It's like Texas Chainsaw, the whole family. Yes. Yeah. Basically. And uh, they said that, you know, when Becca went to college, she changed her name. She changed her social security number. But because of social media, they were able to track her down. And Mrs. Hannigan was able to get the the uh, position as the house mother by, like, putting rats in the house and, like, having death threats against the existing den mother. <clears throat> and then who would be there to pick up the pieces but Mrs. Hannigan? Yeah. So she got herself in there. Um, so, you know, they all, they all kind of like come together. Becca had tried to leave and the Valentine man like shoots an arrow through her hand that was on the door to push the door open. So she's stuck there. And, uh, you know, Mrs. Hannigan is like, huh, so which of my sons will be your Valentine for tonight or whatever? Because Dash had been like minorly flirting with her and Milo was like in love with her and he's still wearing like the little Valentine boy mask and, I remember what they say, but they're like, ah, me thinks Milo or whatever. So he takes off the mask and because he spilled hydrofluoric acid on his own face, he's got a bunch of like burn damage to his face. And I don't know if they say it like, oh, go give her a kiss or something. They so do. It's like a very long, like slow close up of this guy, like going in for a kiss. It's supposed to be scary because his face is like getting close scarred. to you. Yeah. And it's, you know, whatever. But he's like really like puckering up those lips and like licking his lips and stuff. Like yeah, that, they're know? real juicy too. <laughs> uh, so luckily Tyler, even sans fingers comes in hot with his bow and arrow and saves the day. So, you know, he's able to dispatch all of the bad guys. Becca's hand is removed from the door and now they are going to leave. Tyler, Tyler seems fine, by the way, his fingers are chopped off, but he's just like talking normal and everything. And he says that he should go to the hospital and ask Be Becca to come with him. He says he knows it's a first date, but can she grab his fingers and some ice first? Yeah. So there's like, you know, a party cup with ice in it and she's putting his fingies in it to go to the hospital and she's doing it when Mrs. Hannigan on the floor comes back to life for one last scare, grabbing her ankle and Tyler stamps the hell out of her head, like in one head stomp, completely explodes her head and then says the line, I also might need a change of shoes. Uh -huh. And she says, good point. Shall we? And he says, happy Valentine's Day. And they hold hands and walk out the door. Yep. And that's it. Yep. I I, I don't know. There, there's a little bit to it that is, uh, you know, I, I, it's so funny that like sometimes with like the same ingredients, mm -hmm. if they're not arranged just so. Absolutely. It's like all, all this really amounts to is like killer going after you, masked killer. Oh, multiple of them are in cahoots. Yeah. Big speech about how this came to be fight the end totally that's like that's what scream is absolutely <clears throat> it's a very standard formula and it works like it, that's i anticipate it and i look forward to it it can work I, well yeah i mean i was very generally like, it works underwhelmed by this like, i'm not saying it worked here i'm yeah. saying it works in general i did not like this even though i gave it a soft recommend it's it's because it's so short if yeah. this was like a full movie i'd be like just skip it but like if you have any interest like Sure, mm -hmm. whatever, but it's not good. Yeah, the, the like flashing back when the den mother is being like, and of course it didn't take much to come in as the den mother. And mm -hmm. like you see her like making through, it just starts to feel, you don't want it to feel contrived. Yeah. It might be contrived, but maybe you can find the right wording to sort of get yeah. through, you know, but I don't know. This to me felt a little contrived. You did seem to uh, overlook something that was very important. Oh, what? The bow and arrow mm -hmm. that they used to finally kill Milo, I, th I think. Um, her left hand is busted. His right hand, the fingers are chopped off. Mm -hmm. And so together... Oh, right. You're right. Yeah, one of them forget. holds the bow while the other pulls the string. Yeah, they treat it like a slingshot. Well, yeah. I guess it's always kind of like a slingshot, but you know what I mean. True. Yeah. But so it requires both of them to pull the arrow because each of them is essentially missing a hand. Yes, that's right. And that's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's a little something. It's whatever. So, you know, that that's this movie be mine. I, I really thought that the VR of it all 
was going to make it really interesting and worthwhile. Yeah. And it didn't. No. Um, it's it's whatever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're curious, you know, there are worse things that you could do with 29 minutes or whatever, but it's not good. No. And, and it's sort of tainted for me by the quality of like, you know. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, somebody somewhere just went like, we've got this sitting around. Yeah, right. What if we remade this? Right. Not even I mean, bothering to... It's, it's to... unbelievably loosely tied to the that's original true. that they made. It's. I mean, I'm, that's not defending, you know, whoever decided to make it in something bigger. Just saying, like, that is it's really just the concept that there's, you know, a masked bad guy on Valentine's Day. And I guess it could be that in the short that Joe Russo and his team made, um, you know, the guy is killed first. So he kind of seems... The the woman seems like the focal point, yeah. and that's the case in this. But besides that, the the plots are completely different. Yeah, that that is that is true. Mm -hmm. But you know, I just like to think that like you know people people deserve to remain attached to the things that they've certainly created, and so on that level, I, that that sort of colored the experience for me for sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah, things get adapted and and changed when the adaptation is made. Say, mm -hmm. maybe there was a book called valentine that gets turned really? into a, a movie called valentine really and changes are made in really? the process uh, i think maybe we'll talk about that in just a minute beautiful before we get to that which i'm very curious about we just want to make sure that you are aware of patreon.com slash gttu pod which is a really really great way to support the show it means the world to us and there are a lot of really cool bonuses if you decide to do so we actually have a whole second podcast that's called the netherworld dispatch that comes out every single monday and we have a variety of tiers over on patreon so you can check it out and see what fits your finances, what fits your interest and time level, and you can either get the Netherworld Dispatch weekly, you can get it bi-weekly, or you can get it monthly. And in addition to that, over on Patreon, we have commentaries for all of the Scream movies, commentaries for all of the Twilight movies, and we have a Discord, which is a chat room that is popping off every single day with other people who like Guides the Unknown, and it fully rules. And if you go to patreon.com slash pod and look at our tier breakdown, down, you can see where all of those things live and we really hope you enjoy it and thank you so much to everybody over there already we got dozens dare i say hundreds of people yeah. that are backing us on patreon and we i mean cannot, it's definitely hundreds yeah. oh yeah we, we i cannot say just how much we appreciate it yes uh the most recent episode of the netherworld dispatch was uh i told the story of going to disney recently uh with my wife and uh daughter sweet baby zoe mm -hmm. uh and uh my Semi-revelation that just about everything at Disney has some, some dash of horror yeah. involved, which was kind of fun. But also, Baby Zoe went on the Haunted Mansion. We talk about that. And, you know, she was talking about it as recently as this morning. She's now, by the way, if you listen to that show, she said frequently to people, she would mm -hmm. go, Haunted Mansion is so scary. And we were like, oh my God, did we traumatize yeah, you? Yeah, whoops. But this morning, she was laughing and she was like, Haunted Mansion, I saw a ghost talking. Aww. And then I think Allie was like, did you did you have fun? And she just started laughing. Oh, so good. So it's, 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 it, it was all good. Anyway. Go I ahead. wonder if when she, because you gave me this little Haunted Mansion thing that like, it's the, you know, three main hitchhiking ghosts and you press a button and it plays some music and it lights up and I sometimes play with that with Zoe. I wonder if she'll have any recognition. Maybe. When she looks at it next time. Well, I think we're coming over tomorrow night. I so know. Let's uh, let's give it a shot and yeah. see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so go check that out. Patreon.com slash GTTU pod. GTTU pod. I know. I threw I a know. little, little <laughs> flair in there. It was definitely we'll intentional. Judge. Yeah. Uh, and uh, have some fun. Yeah. Why not? All right. Let's talk about uh, Valentine. Mm -hmm. This is a 2001 sort of a slasher movie. I mean, it definitely, people get slashed. To say, why are you saying it's sort of a slasher, or, you know, whatever you said before, too? <clears throat> because I think this movie has been reevaluated in the modern day as being sort of a cult favorite. Okay. And I look at it and I, I don't know, I kind of roll my eyes at it. I don't think, yeah, I mean, maybe it is a cult favorite. I enjoy it. I mean, I watched it in the last couple of years or something. Yeah. Um, It's a fun movie, but it doesn't, I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't want to say it doesn't deserve cult favorite status because it, you know, if people like it, they like it. But yeah, I'm thrilled it's for people pretty, to give anything accolades. Right? Certainly. It's a pretty standard, you know. That's the really the thing. It is 
early mid 2000s sort of like horror movie wrote it doesn't feel like it's something where you're like actually yeah it's amazing by it's the book fun. by the book yeah i would say yeah and uh, i like look i love the book this... i like the book but it's not a standout yeah. really yeah you like the book of uh, that slashers are written by I'm getting yeah, confused because this know, is literally, literally, it turns out, based on a book. No, I, I like the thing that we were talking about before, where it's kind of boilerplate, and it's like, there's, you know, a bad guy, they're revealed, they have yeah. a speech why, yeah. they're, they're defeated, why, like, that happens like in that Valentine happens as well, Valentine. you know? Yeah. Sort of. Does it? Okay. Sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of. So, um, so um, here's what I'm talking about with this movie's reputation. So, again, 2001, uh, it's got an 11% on Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes okay. But it's, but it's audience, so now that's the critic score. So so it's yep. rotten. The audience, the audience score, still rotten, score, still rotten 33. is 33. Mm. That's not bad. That's not yeah. bad. One, Big chunk. one out of three people seems to walk, seems away, to walk from away from this yeah. going, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh -huh. I'm fine with that. Uh, but uh, but Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes often has their sort of like overarching consensus. consensus. Here's what they've got. Here's what they've got. Valentine, Valentine is basically a formulaic, formulaic throwback, throwback to conventional, conventional pre-screen pre -screen slasher, slasher flicks. Critics say, Critics say it doesn't, it offer, doesn't enough offer enough suspense or scares, or scares to justify its addition to the genre. I mean, is it only in that it's not referential to itself or other horror movies that makes it a pre-screen throwback? Well, that's interesting because I think there are two things that that Scream excels at. Mm -hmm. One is this this comedic bent on yeah. on being like, well, what really happens in a horror movie, and then seeing the characters do exactly what they're making fun of horror characters for doing. But what I think really makes Scream work is not that it's being funny meta, right? It's that it is acknowledging our characters need to be intelligent. Right, but I was just wondering if that's what the critics are talking about, or whoever said that, that it's a throwback blah 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 Like, what are they thinking is making Scream scream, not just our opinion? And so uh, yeah. what are they referring to? I certainly took it that way, that they're like, it's, it's, these characters are a little, a little dopey. A little dopey, yeah. Yeah, a little, a little vacuous. Mm -hmm. um, so it turns out uh, that Valentine <laughs> was a book. In 1996, it was written by Tom Savage. Okay. The crazy thing is, it's set online. They really just wanted to option the book for the name. Oh, The studio liked the name Valentine, and they were willing to discard the rest of the book. I'm surprised to hear that they would even need to do that. Right. I'm happy for somebody to get their money. Yeah. So cool. But it's just the word Valentine. Valentine. I agree. I agree. Like you got to option the book for that. Well, so here's the surprising truth. Mm -hmm. There's more to it than that. Okay. That's what most people think. Uh -huh. But I've done some Not research. Not old Willie. I've done some research and I see through the lies. Uh huh. I know what's going on. Real eyes. Mm. Real eyes. Real lies. You got that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tall, call me Tops. Topsy Kretz, because <laughs> I know what's really going on underneath the surface. Tell me 23 things about this movie. You bet. Uh, so it's directed by Jamie Blanks of Urban Legend, mm -hmm. which is a, a big positive to me. Ooh. Written by Gretchen J. Berg and Aaron Harberts and Donna Powers and Wayne Powers. Okay. Four credited screenwriters on this, because I think that this was semi-troubled and reworked. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, so here's here's the the crux of it, right? There are, I think, let's say, four women who are being stalked by a killer. We get very early on flashbacks to like a high school prom. Jeremy Melton, the nerd, yeah, the consummate biggest nerd of all time for all intents and purposes, walked up to each of these girls and asked them to dance, and they each told them to shove it in their own unique way, mm -hmm. except for one of them who sort of put him off a little bit but wasn't outright cruel. Uh, he then approached Dorothy. Dorothy was the... Uh, Elderly the, librarian? <laughs> the lunch lady. <laughs> Dorothy is the, the quote-unquote fat girl okay. who's sitting alone in the bleachers and is willing to take the nerd's hand, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, it's shorthand for we're both outcasts. Yeah, of course. So they're making, all of a sudden, we just snap and they're making out under the bleachers. Okay. When bully boys start peeking through the bleachers and they're like, oh, look at them, the turd and the idiot, or <laughs> you know, whatever. The turd and the nerd. The turd and the nerd. <laughs> oh, I love it. The turd yeah. and the nerd. Um, and they're making fun of them. And they're like, Dorothy, you seriously making out with Jeremy Melton? And seeing that she has a chance at not being outcasted. Oh, no pushes Jeremy away and goes, no, he attacked me. Uh-oh. 
So <laughs> like I said, I saw this. I don't I'm not remembering all this. <laughs> that's oh, totally that's why my reactions are like this. I'm being genuine. I I don't remember this. It's just, it's like when you were telling me about Be Mine just now. I yeah, watched yeah, it. Yeah. It was like you were telling me things I'd never heard before <laughs> right. in my life. I and that's a sign of something, right? When it sort of goes in one so. ear out the other. I mean, I've also only seen it. I don't know, twice. I feel like I maybe saw it like not long after it came out and then I watched it like, a couple years ago. So I just don't, I don't think it's baked in the same way that There's a very good you know, chance I can quote 8,000 things. This was either my third or fourth time watching yeah. this and I had no idea. Yeah. I didn't remember anything. So the Bully Boys, hearing that Jeremy Melton attacked Dorothy, here's what they do. They drag him out from under the bleachers, pull his shirt and pants off, and drag him into the middle of the dance floor. And one of the lines ADR'd for these kids is somebody saying, slap him. Slap him. Slap him. This is, I don't know, uneven. You would think it would be like, kick his ass. Yeah, absolutely. Slap him. Weird. Pathetic. That's how kids Um, talk. We learned that Jeremy Melton, young nerd Jeremy Melton, gets nosebleeds when he's nervous. (laughs) When emotions are (laughs) running high. This is a sort of tell. Uh, for him. So then we jump to our opening kill. We meet Catherine Heigl mm. uh, just before Grey's Anatomy. And ironically, she's playing a pre med student who's going on a date with Jason. Oh, Jeremy Melton. Jason. Uh. Don't remember his last name. Something with an M. Yeah. Anyway. Is it David Bananas? No. Okay. But this guy's annoying as hell. He talks about himself in the third person. He's like, I'll, I'll order for you, babe. Like, he's oh, the, the portrait of a douchebag. Yeah. And uh, so she's trying to go on a date with him, eventually ditches out. And then the next time we see her, she's in the morgue about to dissect a body. Uh-huh. She's like, could you have been, were you ditching on this to go on that date? Or like, right. what, what's the order of operations here? Right. I, I think if I remember correctly, I know I just I don't remember this. I, I think the vibe was maybe that she's just like very dedicated to school. So she ditched the date because it sucked. Yeah. And then she's like, well, I may as well just go do more schoolwork. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I may as well go cut up that dead body. <laughs> yeah. And that's her schoolwork. Now, sidebar about this dead body. It's not. But it looks so much like Jim Parsons from the Big Bang Theory that it was <laughs> almost funny. distracting. It's like, is this an early gig? Thought he was going to bazonga? Yeah. yeah he's bazinga? Gonna, yeah, he's going to get his bazongas out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she is, you know, talking to herself into a microphone or whatever and looking at the dead face of this guy. And then... Uh, like just, a little recorder when they're like, okay, patient is showing signs of... Right. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, she, I guess, gets nervous. So she uses a towel to cover up Sheldon's face. Here's a sound, goes to investigate it, where she runs into some guy whatever Mm -hmm. but while she is distracted she finds a valentine left for her valentine one the journey of love is an arduous trek my love grows for you as you bleed from the neck oh and you pull a little tab on this valentine and it's it's like a man standing behind a woman when you pull the tab his arms come into view and he's holding a knife and her neck is bleeding Yikes. It's pretty spooky but stuff. So sounds like a pretty cool Valentine. It's like it's like some, you know, Jim Carrey Riddler stuff. Yeah. Where yeah. he's leaving those Valentines for Val Kilmer. Yes. And they're just like very ornate. Yes. Very involved. Uh, an accomplished paper cutter. Don't know where he found the time. <laughs> so she reads the Valentine. She's kind of like, ah, what am I to do with this? Yeah. Goes back to cut up the body, places the scalpel at the tummy, and all of a sudden the body starts breathing. It's not Jim Parsons' corpse It's the Valentine killer. Oh, no. She gets all scared. When she looks back, the body's gone. So did the Valentine killer just like pull up his shirt a little bit? (laughs) I I think that he got completely nude and laid down. I don't know where he put the body. Oh, no. They show that the body is like plopped in a room. Okay. But then I would imagine when he's in pursuit, he must be clothed, right? He immediately, swiftly. Puts on all black, like a long okay. black sort of duster, black gloves, black boots, and this cherub mask. Yeah, yeah. He gets dressed too sweet. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm wondering if he did a little crop top midriff action. That's but a good sure, question. I'm sure his toesies were exposed. Eat. Maybe there's a deleted scene where mm-hmm. we, we get to see the full ensemble. Yeah. Uh, so they've got a pretty decent chase scene here because they're in a morgue. Catherine Heigl is running and hiding, and she ends up running into a room full of body bags and corpses. Mm -hmm. Valentine Killer comes in, and and again, we can't see who this person is at all. They're completely obscured. The reason why this is considered to be such a post-scream ripoff is the whole whodunit angle Mm -hmm. is present here, but done very strangely. Yeah. 
So he walks into the room with all these body bags, and first he unzips them, thinking I'll find Catherine Heigl, but they're just anonymous dead old people. Mm -hmm. And then he stops bothering to unzip, and he just starts stabbing into the bodies. Yeah. And I liked it. Yeah. There was a level of unhinged, crazy, no care for I always like that. anybody mm -hmm. at all to just be like, these are probably somebody's loved ones in here, but this guy's a crazed nut. Yeah, Just he is on a mission. Stab into these corpses, and eventually you might find her. And of course, he does. Mm -hmm. uh, he senses, seemingly, that the final bag contains Catherine Heigl. Doesn't stab. Does unzip, which is weird. Yeah, she's in there, and he just immediately slices her throat. Mm -hmm. I did not know that this was going to be a Drew Barrymore esque opening, and yeah, I looked at Catherine Heigl with like, oh, I know Catherine Heigl, so I bet right. she'll stick around. No, she's killed immediately. Her throat is slit inside that body bag. Uh, and then, boom, we're into the movie. Mm. And we're going to meet the rest of our cast. Denise Richards. Um, uh, somebody else? Somebody uh, else. Marley Shelton. Marley Shelton is so, our main character. I'm looking at the poster that we have up on our screen here. Yes. Um, and, of course, David Boreanaz. Of course, David Boreanaz, who is dating Marley Shelton. Mm -hmm. um, and Marley Shelton is friends with Denise Richards, okay. who is boy crazy. Of course. And it's around Valentine's Day, and they go, like, speed dating and stuff. And they've dated so many guys who even knows who they all are. But here's where we can just speed, because this whole thing is, like... Pretty slow moving, yeah. except for a few set pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to start, the movie centers a lot around these Valentines, these scary Valentines. So here's what gets sent to everybody. Uh, the Valentine 2 goes to grown-up Dorothy, the fat girl. Yeah. Uh, roses are red. Violets... Did she get hot or anything? Yeah. I feel like that's, yeah, that's always the thing. It's Jessica Capshaw, who is Steven uh -huh. Spielberg's stepdaughter. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Roses are red, violets are blue. They'll need dental records to identify you. Yeah. Which is kind of fun. I know, I like it. It's so arch and yeah. over the top, but I enjoy it. I like it. Uh, and then uh, this one, the third and final, sadly, uh, Valentine. Yeah, I like these Valentines. I want more of these. I want more of these. Yeah. A box of chocolates yeah. shows up to Denise Richards' house. She lives with Jessica Caulfield. Okay. Who I, I recognize... I think she was in, she might have been an urban legend. That's her real name, Jessica Caulfield? I think so. I do think that in here I will be sometimes <laughs> arbitrarily using character names versus performer names. All right, I'm, I'm going to look it up. You can keep going and I'll tell everybody. So uh, Denise Richards and Jessica Caulfield uh, live together and they get this um, Valentine simultaneously. So who knows who it's really for, mm -hmm. along with a box of chocolates. Jessica starts chomping into one of the chocolates Hell yeah. while they read. Tis a well-known fact. Beauty is skin deep. Savor the taste. You are what you eat. Uh-oh. And then Jessica Caulfield starts freaking out in the most authentic freak out I've maybe seen in a movie ever. Uh-huh. Where, like, the veins in her neck puff out as she's screaming because the chocolate she bit into has maggots in it. Yeah. Bull. But it looks like something out of Fear Factor. Like, it is, it is unvarnished. Yeah. It is undignified almost. I mean, that's what you want. You would be those things in that moment. You would. Yeah. Similarly undignified is the following scene where Denise Richards and Jessica Caulfield are on the couch trying to be like, who sent this to us? This boy? That boy? All the hearts we've broken? Mm -hmm. The envelope, the, the Valentines are all signed J.M. They finally figured out Jeremy, Jeremy Melton. Jeremy Melton. By the way, it is Jessica Caulfield, and she was in Legally Blonde, White Chicks, The Drew Carey Show. Oh. So take your pick. Okay. Yeah. She, she's, she's plenty fun. Yeah. When they land on Jeremy Melton as a potential uh, sender mm -hmm. of the maggot chocolates, she goes, no, remember Jeremy Melton? Hi, it's me, Jeremy Melton. Oh. She goes so big. It's like, very specifically, uh -huh. it's like she's doing a character on Mad TV. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Where it was like too big. Yep. Too yeah. cartoony. Like, what? Like, oh, my You're God. You're giving me a headache. You gotta dial this down. Yeah. But so they joke about, of course, it couldn't possibly be jeremy melton the quickest of mad tv asides okay <laughs> um can't wait there is a documentary about miss cleo on hbo max watched oh it. did you watch yeah. it yeah isn't it weird that they have the woman who played miss cleo on mad tv simply because she played miss cleo on mad tv because they've got nothing she's one of the talking heads and she's the only connection and she's very intense in it 
to the point where I was like, did she know Miss Cleo or something? But no. No. It's it's like same with it her is. and Raven Simone. Yes, they, I know. They act like they have some inside past <laughs> understanding Miss Cleo because they played her in comedy sketches. I I'm know. sorry, you didn't get lost in your mad TV character. No. No, you definitely didn't, nor did you get lost in Miss Cleo on That's So Raven. No. I thought the mad TV lady was especially like she was really what you're supposed to do. She was like really acting, but she was so intense. And I was like, this is so weird. They, they, they drove me kind of nuts. It yeah. was, that was a hit piece. Yeah. That was a hit piece on Cleo. <laughs> I know. It was so strange. Um, sickening. Sickening. So, um, all right. All right. All right. All right. So let's get to the first kill, which is that that performer who I just mentioned, Jessica Caulfield. Mm-hmm. They go to a an art gallery opening. It is like cartoon movie art gallery where it's yeah. like big video screens of people being like I love you I love you <laughs> yeah right I love you like it's very like 90s yeah high tech yeah like installations and these panels can move so it becomes this like shining-esque maze mm-hmm. and Jessica Caulfield gets lost running through it until the Cupid mask killer shoots her with a bow and arrow yeah in the middle of this big public gallery right and shoots her so hard, she goes flying through a door. Oh, God. Falls down a long stairwell and lands in a dumpster that closes on top of her. It's quite an impact. Coincidentally, she was due to fly somewhere the next day, so nobody even knows that she's dead. <sighs> but it's just like, so broad. Yeah. So broad. It's ridiculous. So uh, they talk to a, a slime ball detective uh, who first chastises them for being like, why didn't you tell me about this Jeremy Melton character? Mm-hmm. And then about two cents later, just goes... I mean, it couldn't possibly be him. <laughs> so what do you care then? They spend like a solid 20 minutes of this movie being like, I bet it's Jeremy. Yeah. It couldn't possibly be Jeremy. What are you talking about? Where you're like, oh my God. <laughs> right. You're just like spinning your wheels, you know? That That's another um, trope that I like in these movies. It doesn't come up a whole ton, but I like it when they basically know who the killer is. Yeah. But they just don't know who he is because he's either grown up or, you know, whatever the case is. Totally. I enjoy that. Yeah, I, I'm totally down with that. Yeah, so like the whole thing here is that it's possible that Jeremy Melton could have gotten some form of, you know, he was a teenager. Right. When they first knew him. So he pulls up an image, which I'm literally doing in the video version of the show. He could have had a glow up. Yeah, he could have had a glow up over the course of his life. So I've got this. This is from the movie itself. This is Jeremy Melton on the screen. He is the quintessential nerd, mm-hmm. uh, a messy bowl-ish cut. Yep. Glasses, but they're, they're like those Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. Yep. Buck teeth. I don't know where this photo is from in universe because they make it look like he this is like a police headshot. <laughs> yeah, because he's looking into the camera. I mean, realistically, it could be like a class photo and they zoomed in on the kid. You Why is his I mean? face all bruised? This must have been well, right after know. they pulled his pants down and slapped him. Oh, yeah, you're him, right. Yeah, you know? who knows? So uh, the cop guy uh, basically took this photo and tried to see, they tried to age it up to be like, now he could look like anything. He might look like this. He might look like that. So yeah. take a look. And I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil who it actually is. Right. Everybody get ready. Should I do it yet? Well, let's just let's just stick to the idea that you're seeing his face transform okay. into an adult. Okay. All right. So he All right, they formed the he glasses. He kind of like off. Thomas Lennon for a minute. He does look like Thomas <laughs> Lennon. You're right. <laughs> like from Reno 911. Yeah. Uh, a little bit like Chandler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Light Chandler. Uh-huh. Oh, well. Oh. There Whoops. I spoiled it. Okay. So <laughs> The surprise is that it's... If you're watching the video version, apologies. Uh, whatever. It's Valentine. No, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, we're barreling toward the end anyway. True. <laughs> so they try to age him up. And then when we actually find out who the killer is, mm-hmm. it's Angel. Yeah, it's, it's David, David Boreanaz. Boreanaz. So their aging up technology did not work no. at all. It was ineffective. Yeah, because it, it, it looks like we said either like Thomas Lennon, uh, Officer Dingle or whatever. Dangle? <laughs> Detective Dangle? <laughs> Officer <Okay>. Dingle. <laughs> or or Chandler. Yeah. And David Boreanaz does not look like either of those people. Yeah, like square jawed, <laughs> yeah. lion-esque physique this yeah. man yeah yeah he could have played you know remember uh ron perlman in beauty and the beast yeah i feel like david boreanaz would put in, go in there pretty well i think he would be a good beast i think so too i totally agree yeah so the point is this this entire scene is a, a goddamn mess yeah uh but i love the 90s cheese mm-hmm. effects of aging up oh, jeremy yeah. melton from bruised scabbed face <laughs> right to not the guy that we're shown him to be no, later on no um 
Uh, so, so I guess you can't blame the cops. No, is the I point, not, yeah. you know? Now, here is where I realized something kind of funny. Our main character is Marley Shelton, mm-hmm. who is the one girl that didn't make fun of him. She was the one girl that was like, maybe we can dance later. Right. Uh, but then I realized Mary Shelton, Jeremy Melton, Shelton V. Melton. Oh, my God. A showdown for the ages. It's incredible. Whew. They should have called it Valentine, Shelton V. Melton. Yeah. Well, maybe when they inevitably remake it, uh, yeah, when they'll they, have the foresight to do that. They do a sequel in the future. Or if they do a, what do they call it? a What is it? A requel? Requel. requel. Yeah. Because then also you can bring in the people from the original, yep. sort of usher in the new class. So that's a perfect opportunity for Shelton V. Melton. Well, they don't, they're not going to have a lot of original cast members to work with. Because Denise true. Richards is tri- uh, uh, trapped inside a hot tub. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. She's trapped inside a hot tub. And then the Valentine killer uses a drill to stab at her. Pretty brutal. Through the clear plastic cover, which is a little a little confusing. <laughs> yeah. I will say. Yeah, I guess he's just having a bit of fun. Um, But kind of interesting. So that's how she's Mm -hmm. killed. Um, uh, The detective gets his head chopped off Mm -hmm. um, at some point. And then uh, we learn essentially that after that night that Jeremy was had his pants pulled down and slapped, uh, he was kicked out of school. (laughs) So stupid. Ended up in a mental facility and then his parents died in a fire. Um, And the original script is from IMDb. The original script delves more into Jeremy's predicament. It is strongly implied that Jeremy was the instigator behind the fire that killed his parents. Um, basically, he was he was so troubled, he killed his own family and mm-hmm. has now waited all these years, changing physically through right. probably working out and getting real buff when yeah. he was in, in, locked up and getting some form of plastic surgery to turn into David Bananas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now he's coming after all the girls who had bullied him so long, long ago. Right. Um, they have a big party, uh, out of nowhere, Dorothy starts wondering if Jeremy Melton might be at the party. Uh Uh-huh. They haven't gotten it. They, they only dance around this idea that because Jeremy Melton had plastic surgery. Yeah. Anyone they know. Right. It could be Jeremy Melton. Could be Jeremy Melton. It's like half done. Yeah. Where they're like anyone who's got the initials (laughs) JM. Right. They think might be Jeremy Melton as if it's like he worked out, he changed his face but he didn't change his name he didn't at, change his, or initials. his initials at yeah. the very least he'd be too confused if he changed his own initials yeah so he's, he's going to be some version of james you know multi-tool or you know right johan mm. mcgillicuddy Ooh, that's a nice one yes uh david banana starts to get a little creepy uh but mostly it's because he's said to have been sober for a while and he started drinking at this party mm-hmm. Um, and mo- more than anything, it's important that Dorothy has started acting Yeah, weird. Um, this is where I started wondering why the killer is even wearing a mask. Um, if the point is that, uh, we need to know which one of these bros, like tech bro guys, whatever. Is Jeremy Melton. Is Jeremy Melton. Well, but then, you know, they don't want to get caught. I, so, cause they're, they would yeah. still be in trouble under their assumed identity. Fair enough. But here's the other big thing that I, I haven't quite touched on. I mentioned that when he was young, he would get nosebleeds mm-hmm. as the Valentine killer. Every time he kills someone, his nose bleeds through the mask. Right. Right. He's leaving DNA. That's true. Everywhere he goes. Yeah. That's problematic. The mask becomes a little less relevant when your nostril perfectly lines up with the mask's nostril. Yeah. And you're leaving your DNA everywhere you go. That's very true. Uh, Dorothy, uh, finally, Marley Shelton is running from David Bananas, Mm -hmm. thinks that he's probably the Valentine killer uh, because she's like, we've been dating for so long, but but I don't really know you. You act so strangely. You're being really creepy. Uh, And then she runs upstairs at this big party and is attacked by the Valentine killer. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, they fall down the stairs together. Tumble, tumble, tumble. She unmasks the Valentine killer. It's Dorothy. The fat girl. Oh. And then David Bananas shoots Dorothy before she can possibly say anything that would very deliberately incriminate herself. Right. And in IMDb. Or incriminate him or vindicate her, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because as I already spoiled, if you watch the video version, it is David Bananas. Yeah. And so there's a lot of consternation online about why was Dorothy in the Valentine killer costume? Yeah. Was she also doing stuff? Evidently, there's a whole like left on the cutting room floor thing about David Boreanaz putting her in the costume and knocking her out. And mm, okay. maybe she lunged at Marley Shelton for help. Just like or... confused or something. Yeah. It's loosey goosey, 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 goosey. But the movie ends 
without Mar- Marley Shelton ever learning the truth. Really? Yes. Um, I don't remember that. The last things that happen are what was going on in the video that I, I spoiled it. It's Marley Shelton and David Boreanis hugging. Uh-huh. And his nose bleeds and drips down onto her cheek. Yeah. And, you know, you hear the police coming from far away, and they're going to get the whole story that it was Dorothy behind all of this. Yeah. But Jeremy Melton grew up, became David Boreanis, fell in love with the one girl who wasn't cruel to him. Right. Killed everybody for revenge, but in a sick serial killer psychopath way, Mm -hmm. does love her. Right. And got away with it all. Or will he? Is it implied maybe that she's going to see his nose bleeding when she pulls back and... Maybe we'll shoot you know, that all maybe together. it's like a little know. bit of a cliffhanger y sort of thing in a way, but not really. You know? That's that's a that's a great question. Yeah, I'm I'm not uh I'm not quite sure. Interesting. But uh here's something kind of fun. Uh-huh. Uh so here's some IMDb trivia stuff. So I mentioned that the boys pulled down his pants and said slap him. Right. Why didn't he go after the boys? Yeah, that's a great question. Evidently the director has said he did. Oh he okay. killed them all before this. Okay. There's like nothing to indicate that. Sure. Uh, and then here's a thing that I thought was kind of fun. When Jeremy Melton asks each girl for a dance, they each state a mean comment right after he asks them. This foreshadows each of the girls' fate. Shelly says, oh. in your dreams, loser, dies lying down in the sleeping position. Lily says, ew, <laughs> receives maggots in a chocolate box and her body lands in a dumpster. <laughs> Paige says, I'd rather be boiled alive. She gets thrown into a hot tub and is later executed. Dorothy says, he attacked me. Makes everyone believe that he was she was attacked by Jeremy after being caught kissing him. Uh, and then he makes it all seem like she, she did attacked. the attacking, yeah. even though she did not attack anybody. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, which is, which is, I don't know. That's cool. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. I, I did pull a few uh, fun reviews. Uh, this is Hall of Fame, they say. It's moody and atmospheric and avoids eight out of nine of the 100 serial killer movie cliches. So I give it four stars. Five stars. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) Uh, Then this is from DSG. Saw it two times on my DVD player. More spins in it will be happening. Very terrifying movie. Hopefully no one ever does this to someone at a dance. And hopefully no one ever kills like this. It's a sick period to kill innocent people, but the way this cherub killer does is terrifying. (laughs) I won't go into every death sequence. Let's just say they're gory enough. Shocking. (laughs) We'll see this again and again and always be terrified. The ending is interesting. I figured it out and what it means before the credits rolled. Maybe you can too. (laughs) Five stars. I like that review. (laughs) It's written like a haiku, like an extra long haiku. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, here's Eddie's thoughts. <laughs> That's so funny. The recent Hollywood slasher genre, post Scream flicks, have become so old that I watched this and found it really cool and refreshing. So you could knock holes in the plot with a feather. Anne Robinson is scarier on the weakest link. And its humor is almost non existent. But I watched it with a clear mind and felt totally absorbed by it. Five stars. I think it's worth pointing out that that review was written in 2001. Okay. <laughs> which was a fun byproduct of looking at this on Amazon. Is Amazon's yeah, yeah. Are old enough at this point. Right. That I guess uh, Anne Robinson on The Weakest Link was relevant when this person wrote their review. Right. Uh, here's what Udi mm-hmm. Shevitt had to say. Uh, Valentine equals horror plus blood plus sex equals great movie. <laughs> Two equal signs in that equation. Yeah, wow. Valentine was a great and cool. It's a lot scarier than Scream and have a lot more action than Urban Legend. It has a really simple and original plot. If you are a horror movies fan, see or buy this movie and you will not have any regrets. Valentine is a new horror movie from WB. It's a movie that won't leave you alone on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Afraid to be alone on Valentine's Day? You should be. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's five out of five and I have one one star review Okay. from Sarah who said, Quite gripping, but actually quite boring. One star. <laughs> which, to my eye, are exact I'm opposites. I'm to say those are opposite. Exact opposites. Ah, people are so funny. So I'm going to make short work I of it, it, but this is based on a book. And oh, a lot right. of people say right. it's only based on the book and name. They just wanted to option the name. The yep. book is from 1996 by Tom Savage, and I read parts of it, mm-hmm. and it's way closer than you would think. Okay. People make it out to be like these are two separate beasts. There's yeah. a lot of connective tissue. 
Um, Valentine is the killer going after girls from college who pranked him, not high school. Mm -hmm. Uh, main character is Jillian Talbot. She is a writer and there are spooky Valentines that get sent. Here is one of them that I was able to find. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Sugar is sweet. And I'm still watching you. Mm. Spooky. The killer is Victor DeMorta. Ooh. Who in high school was nicknamed Victor DeWeirdo. Oh, that's weak. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, uh, as he grew, it's the same concept, right? So he was he was made fun of at yeah. this, in, in college here. I read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's that these girls mocked him. He had a troubled home life. He did kill his parents. Okay. He was like on the on the track to become a, a serial killer or something anyway. Yeah. But he's mocked. He's lured to a, gr a girl's room on Valentine's Day and she gets says for him to get all nudie. Uh -oh. So he does. And then people pop out and make fun of him and they have a camera and they film his nudie. Yeah. Um, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Was that clear? Yeah. Uh, and then he flipped out and started attacking them. Oh. And because of that, he got kicked out of school. Okay. He is thrown in jail, essentially, mm -hmm. for 12 years where he works out, gets real buff. 12 years? Uh-huh. Seems long. Gets out, decides to get facial plastic surgery, exactly yeah. like David Boreanaz. It's the exact I mean, same plot. Yeah, it seems quite similar. It's incredibly similar, but there are enough... I mean, I can see why they would have optioned it now. It's I know, it the is name. the plot. It, it's yeah. just reworked, right. similar to Be Mine from the the short, right? Mm -hmm. Like like some of the elements are there. They're just different, but... Yeah. It's close enough. You yeah. can't say that they're not related. Mm -hmm. They are. Uh, but but this is very important. Okay. Victor de Morta is the man's real name. But now that he's out of jail. Is it jail, like de muerte? Like no, death? but de M O R T A, but mort is okay. still, yeah. you know, it still means death. Yeah. Uh, he has to use fake names. Here are some of the names that he uses Neil Avnet, Len Vanetti, Nate <laughs> okay, Levin. Gotcha. <laughs> Do you get it yet? Oh, I understand. When he finally confronts Jillian, he says, there's no Nate. Nate Levin is an anagram, you stupid evil bitch. That's what he says. <laughs> he also calls one of the victims that he kills a turd. Oh, the turd and the nerd. The turd and the nerd. See? You're right, it came it back. It is connected. So in this one, every year, he kills one of the girls. Okay. They each get their own separate Valentine's Day. Okay. And where he winds them, he dines them, and then he suffocates them or burns them and yeah. serial killer stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, by the end of the thing, his, <laughs> it's very gory, actually. They were like, he was finally about to kill her. He was bearing down on her. And then there was the sound of an explosion. And when she looked up, half his head was blown off. Oh. And it's like bits of brain rained down on top of her. And I was like, this is, whoa. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, I do, uh, I was just taken aback. I couldn't believe the anagram thing. He There's a whole so. thing, like, we get his whole inner monologue because it's a book, and he's like, I I couldn't be, what's his name? Victor Vince DeMorta. De yeah. I couldn't be him anymore. But I knew who I'd become. <laughs> Valentine. I became <laughs> Valentine. Yeah. And that's why you always pick names that were anagrams. Of course. That's which, who he was. Again, DNA to the movie, J.M., mm -hmm. are these other J.M. names, could they really be Jeremy Melton? Right, right. That's where that came from. Came from the book. Yeah. Where he did stick with some sort of an anagram. Uh, in the movie, David Boreanaz' fake name is Adam Carr. So mm -hmm. they did drop the anagram thing. Wisely, I think. I think wisely. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it'll be... I, I can't imagine ever seeing the anagram, I'm yeah. really this person thing working no. for a long time. No, definitely not. But there you go. That's that's Valentine. More than you ever Great. wanted to know. No, I, I love all of this. I want to know all of that. So thank you. Well, it's behind us now. I may yeah. never see this again now. Yeah, I, you know, I would watch it again. I know you would. Yeah. I probably will too. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yep. We hope that you had a good time. Happy mm -hmm. belated Valentine's Day. Here yes. are some spooky Valentine's things. It's so funny that there are so few mm -hmm. Valentine's horror things that like in the lead up to recording, I saw so many channels cover this movie. Yeah. It's like, yep. there's really only a handful and everybody's looking at the same stuff. Totally. You know? I know. It's funny. But- what can you do? Exactly. It's fun to talk about. It is fun to talk about. I don't care. Talk about. What are you going to do? Uh, so follow at GTTU pod on all social media to keep up to date with us. You'll even be notified when we go live and record future episodes. Mm -hmm. Patreon.com slash GTTU pod. Pick a tier, whatever works. You're going to get a ton of stuff or at least access to the Discord. Yeah. And you'll be supporting us, which thank you, thank you, thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. 
And you can also follow us online. Yep, I'm at Chillin' Kristen. I'm at The Myth Traveler. So, there you go, everybody. Mm -hmm. Another holiday uh, in the record books. Happy belated. We're going to be back next week to talk about more spooky, creepy stuff that, that, that digs its fangs into you and won't let go. Oh, yeah. But until that time comes, we must travel. Back to the netherworld. Go. Quack. Yaw. 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 Oh, yaw. Great. Jeremy Melton. Melton. Smelt and melt it. Slap him. <laughs> Slap him. That, that is so weird. I couldn't believe it when I heard I know. It. I don't feel like I fully registered it at first. It's so strange. <laughs> <laughs> Slap him. Slap him, fellas. Somebody who doesn't get the scale of what they're already up to. Yeah. It's like way more of an assault. Slap him. Slap him. So dumb.